All right, you AGS1 fans. Uh, welcome to our very first closure notes. So closure notes uh, are kind of a laundry list of everything that could come up on a quiz or test on this material. And it's uh, everything that you should kind of be acquainted with. Uh, we're going to go in depth with these closure notes and kind of do some specific examples and try to bring everything all together that we've been doing in this class so far or in this mod. So some words that you guys should be familiar with um, that we're going to be using are arithmetic, geometric, recursive, explicit, common difference, common ratio, and we're going to do all of that stuff with tables, expressions, and maybe even a dot diagram. The first thing that we're going to focus on uh, is what an arithmetic sequence is. So an arithmetic sequence um, is just, it's defined by how it's changing. So if it's adding or subtracting by the same number every single time, that makes a sequence arithmetic. So for instance, with this uh, table right here, I have n's on the side, and then f of n's here. Um, if you look at what's happening to the numbers, 20, 15, 10, 5, 0, uh, to get from here to here, it's a subtract 5. And to get from here to here, it's also a subtract 5. And this keeps happening every single time. This right here is the common difference. This is what makes this sequence arithmetic. So the common difference in this uh, sequence is negative 5. So, common differences are always used when describing an arithmetic sequence. Let's take that same sequence of 20, 15, 10, 5, 0, and um, talk about how to express it recursively. You guys, a recursive equation always uses a previous term. So to find the next term in the function, you take the previous and multiply it by the common difference. So, you guys, the common difference right here in this particular problem is going to be negative 5 because that's how it was changing. In general, with this sequence, you take the last term and subtract 5 to get the next term. Um, to put that in a little bit more of a function notation, this right here, f of n equals f of n minus 1. Now, a lot of students are like, what is the n f of n minus 1 part? This is just the term right before n. So this is the previous term. And then cd is still our common difference. So to create this one for this actual... Um, example of 20, 15, 10, 5, 0. It's just going to be every term, f of n is the previous term, f of n minus 1, but then minus 5. Now, that's most of the recursive definition, but to be proper, we should put a little semicolon and say what the very first term is. You could either say that f of 0 is 20, or you could say f of 1 is equal to 15. I'm fine with both of those. Let's say f of 1 is equal to 15. So this is the recursive definition for the example that we've been working with. It's every term is the previous term subtracted by 5. And here's where it starts. The first term is 15. Now, an explicit definition uh, is much more of like a function notation style. And here's how explicits work. It still uses the common difference times n, but then you subtract the zero point. Now the zero point, sometimes like if they give you a real world problem, they just start with like day one or something. And you have to have to go a step backwards to figure out what day zero was. Luckily in our table, we know that day zero was 20, so we don't actually have to figure it out. We can just use that. So, for this particular example, f of n equals the common difference, which is negative 5 times n, but then we have to subtract... Sorry, that should have been plus the zero point. Might be... 
Uh, 20 is where it starts on the zero day. So, this is an explicit definition of that arithmetic sequence. So, arithmetic goes, subtracts or adds the same number every single time. You can look at it through tables, recursive definitions, or explicit definitions. Um, you could also do it with a dot diagram. Any of this can be done with dot diagrams where you would just kind of have to count up how the dots are changing. But I would probably just throw that into a table and then start from here. Geometric sequences. Geometric sequences are also sequences of numbers that are changing in the same way every time. But the main thing about geometrics, they are multiplying by the same number every time. Now, it could be multiplying by a whole number, like, you know, 5 or 2 or 3. Or it could be a fraction. It could be like that it gets cut in half every time, multiplied by 1 over 2. Let's take a look at this specific example in this table, where here's our n's, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and here's our f of n's, 4, 12, 36, 108, 324. You guys, to get from 4 to 12, this is a times 3. To get from 12 to 36, this is also a times 3. 36 times 3 is 108, so this pattern continues, that it gets multiplied by 3 every single time. This is your common ratio. So back up here with the arithmetic sequence, it was a common difference. Now, this is the common ratio with a geometric. to put that into a recursive definition. Recursive definition for a geometric sequence is very similar to the arithmetic. It still is like the next term is the previous term, but instead of adding the common difference, you multiply by the common ratio. So each term is the previous term multiplied by the common ratio. So for our function, they were getting multiplied by three so each term is the previous term multiplied by 3. But just like with the arithmetic, you need to have like a first term. We need to do that with the geometric as well. Every recursive definition should have a, a, a starting term. So in the table, let's see, day 1 was 12. So f of 1 is equal to 12. And then we are donezo with that one. The explicit equation for a geometric sequence. In general, you take the zero point, so like the day zero, multiply it by the common ratio to the power of n. So this right here is a power. With our specific example, we didn't actually have to figure out what day zero was, it's just right here in the table. When n is zero, f of n is four. So, f of n is equal to 4 times the common ratio, which was 3. It was being multiplied by 3 every single time to the power of n. And then, that is it. You don't need a first point or anything like that with an explicit. That's why, in general, explicits are actually kind of nicer to work with because they require less and, like, you know, to find the... 10th term in that sequence, you would just need to replace this with a 10 and then do it on a calculator. It'd be a very large number. All right, guys, uh, that's all I got for these.